What is up, everybody? Welcome back to RaceNews.com, and welcome to our, uh, I guess, start of the big previews of the uh, Breeders' Cup here as we're now getting into the crunch time uh, of uh, of the next you know week and a half, trying to figure out what's going to happen in these Breeders' Cup races. This video, we're going to go over the pre-entries for the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, Grade 1 event, obviously $200,000 purse, going a mile and a 16th. There have been 12 horses that are pre-entered for this race. Now, two of the horses, their first preference is actually going to be the juvenile turf. So most likely a field of 10, at least as of right now, it looks to be a field of 10 that could get cut down. You never really know uh, with injuries and stuff like that as we're getting closer. Official draw coming up next week. Remember, this is just the pre-entries for this week. A few horses really surprised me. I guess, um, well, a couple horses really surprised me. Let's go over them now. So Cuban Thunder. Uh, this is a horse uh, bred in Ireland. He's going to come over for this race. Uh, and that was the first one that I was like, wow, that's that's really shocking. I really hadn't heard that this horse was going to come uh, over for the race. Um, you know, like I said, bred in Ireland, been running over uh, overseas at Ascot Newmarket, you know, uh, places that you've heard of, you recognize when you look at the past performances. But uh, going to be really interesting to see him come over for this one, Cuban Thunder. Another one, Ekoro Neo, uh, another horse, this one coming over from Japan. Uh, I mean, this is an interesting horse as well. Uh, another one that uh, I, I really hadn't heard a lot about. Now, this horse, like I said, has been running in Japan, but was bred right here in the United States. This is a Bernardini horse out of a street since mare. So this horse, if it was trained by Todd Pletcher or, or Bob Baffert, we wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, this uh, Kentucky bred horse has been racing over in Japan. He's going to come over uh, at Coro Neo coming over for this race. Now we get into the ones we know. Fierceness uh, for Todd Pletcher uh, was disappointing last time out. But, uh, you know, had a lot of hype before that poor effort. General Partner, another horse for Chad Brown that we know. Uh, uh, Johannes Brahms, also a uh, pre entered for this race, but the first preference going to go to the juvenile turf. We'll talk about him probably in that race. Locked for Todd Pletcher. Muth for Bob Baffert. Noted also for Todd Pletcher, but first preference, juvenile turf. Another one we'll probably talk about there. Like I said, first preference going over to the turf. Prince of Monaco for Bob Baffert. The wine steward for Mike Maker. Timberlake for Brad Cox and Wind Me Up, one of my favorite named horses of this two-year-old crop, also for Bob Baffert. So, you know, as you see, we're probably going to have a field of 10. You got a couple of international horses that I wouldn't say we're going to have to regroup, but we're definitely going to have to go back and really watch the replays and look at these horses. Some of the international horses coming over were very prepared for. These were two, I'll be honest. I was not. So I have to go back and look at those horses. And then you've got, um, you know, your, your guys, right? Pletcher. Baffert, Brown, Mike Maker. Yeah, we know those guys, and those guys are going to probably <laughs> dominate this race, to be real honest. I thought Fierceness was interesting. This horse was a huge uh, maiden winner at Saratoga, ran pretty poor in the Champagne. Him being pre-entered here was kind of a surprise to me. We'll see if he can bounce back, kind of live up to that potential. But obviously, this is this is um, Santa Anita, and you got Muth, and you got Prince of Monaco, and you got Wind Me Up for Bob Baffert. And I think that's where this race starts. Not saying that's who I'm going to pick. Not saying they're locks to win. That's where this race starts. Todd Pletcher, or excuse me, Bob Baffert has three, and then you got Todd Pletcher sitting there, uh, you know, with locked in fierceness. So. They're probably going to dominate this thing. I think it's going to come between you know those five. We'll see what happens uh, with those. Uh, one last one to kind of mention, Timberlake, a horse that won the Champagne for Brad Cox. He's also pre-entered here. He was pretty disappointing uh, in the hopeful. He came back and ran really well uh, to win the Champagne. So maybe he's kind of on the up and up as well. Obviously, another trainer that knows how to win this race. So Overall, that's it. That's kind of the 12 that are pre-entered, the 10 that are most likely uh, to be here. My first impression is I think this is going to be a very good race. I think it's very competitive. I'll be back next week with the final picks. That's kind of what I'm thinking as of now, though, kind of what I laid out there, uh, but got to narrow them down, final picks next week. So overall, I think it's going to be a really good race. I think the pre-entries um, are pretty solid for this one. So uh, very much looking forward to this year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile. All right, that'll do it for our preview of the breeder. Well, our, our preview of the pre-entries of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. We'll be back next week for the full preview of this race. Everybody hit that like button if you like it. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Want to get alerted anytime we do uh, uh, videos like this. Most importantly, good luck if you're starting to handicap these Breeders' Cup races. 
RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track. It's Breeders' Cup season, and we've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the World Championships. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash RacingDudes right now. Click the notification bell. You never want to miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.